Hi, I'm Quentin Kieran. I'm with the uh, Ohio Port Council. I'm the director of communications there. I've been there about five years. Uh, first off, a little bit about um, me and what I do uh, at the council. Does anyone know what the port checkoff is? Yeah, a couple heads nod. Um, so every time a pig is sold, 40 cents for every $100 in value goes to the National Port Checkoff. And an even smaller amount of that of those funds go, stay within the state that the pig was sold. Those monies can only be used for promotion, education, and research. So when I started my job, I created two kind of umbrella goals. So these two things uh, have to carry with me in all the projects and programs that I do every day when I walk in the office. There's two things. That's to promote work and to protect our members freedom to operate, which in layman's terms means enhance the image of farmers, right? So why are those two things uh, kind of important? Uh, we'll talk just a little bit about that here briefly. What's this? The image quality isn't great, but what is this real quick? Yeah, okay. Um, what don't we see a lot of in this picture? Yeah, farms, green space, whatever. Uh, this is how most of the population lives, right? So it's really easy for us to be in these rooms and, and be all jacked up on agriculture and do some chest beating and talk about how we, we really appreciate the things that we do as farmers and we really, we really appreciate our neighbors and we really appreciate that we provide a healthy, wholesome food source, right? But there are lots of people that don't get to see that stuff on a daily basis. So we have to communicate the things that we're doing. And we have to talk about the things that we're doing. Because the reality is, what's, what's here? Highest population. So we've got our high population over here. Where's ag? Right? Over here. So there's a big disconnect, right? Geographically. We can't get everyone on a farm. So what do we do? Social media has opened us up to be able to reach out and tell our story and talk to people. And it doesn't matter what platform you are, how many Facebook people we have in the room. Hands quick, quick, quick. Instagram. Twitter, Pinterest, you know the whole gamut. It's important to uh, for us to study kind of those those social trends, see where people are spending their time, and have those conversations online. Because the people that live here, while what they see out their window every day is very much different than what we see out of our windows, maybe when we're home or when we're driving through the countryside, but what do we have in common? What's one thing we've got in common? We eat. Yeah, we eat, right? And they've got questions. People have questions. I have questions about my food. I have questions about what's in a veggie slider. <laughs> like, people have questions. They want to know. And the best place that the best place to have those conversations is where folks already spend their time. People are spending their time online right now. And this stat may be a little dated. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Last time I checked, if Facebook were a country, it'd be the third largest in the world. So, just populations. We'll talk a little bit more about numbers here in a bit. But, okay, I need a volunteer real quick, fast, somebody. I can try to do this by myself. Before talk to you. Okay, so we're in a grocery store just a little bit later, right? And you see me and I'm browsing with some, looking at something. And uh, you recognize me and you come up and you just want to say hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> so maybe like, hey, you gave that presentation um, earlier at school, and I wanted to ask you a question about that. Hey, you gave that presentation earlier at school, and I had a question about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do I do? Just walk away. Yeah, I ignored you, right? That makes me a what? Uh, well, a jerk. But <laughs> <laughs> so next time you have a question, and you want information, or Take it, break it down very basic. Next time you see me in the grocery store, what aren't you going to do? Talk to you. Yeah, you're not going to come up. You're going to be like, hey, there's that jerk for talking to class, and we'll need to give me the time of day when I have a question. Right? You then sit down. So, <laughs> unintentionally, we can be a jerk or the wall. So, online, when people have questions and they come to us and they're seeking information and they do something really simple, like right on our wall and say, hey, what's it look like inside a pig barn? and we don't answer, what are we doing? You've all heard the adage, if you don't tell your story, no one else will. Well, that's bull. Because if we don't tell our story, someone else is already doing it. They're already doing it, right? So you're a resource. And at the Port Council, 
We strive to be the resource for information on pigs, pork, and farming. When people have a question about how pigs are raised in Ohio, we want to be the place people come. When people have a question about how to cook pork, because they always dry it out because they overcook it and it's tough and they don't like pork, so they go to White Castle instead, we want to be the resource for that information, right? So they can have an enjoyable eating experience. So we work really hard to have those conversations. The whole basis around what I do is talking to people, having conversations, and putting people at ease with the concerns that they may or may not even know that they have about our food system. Forget the pig as an animal, treat them just like a machine in a factory. That's heartwarming, right? <laughs> so that was in a trade publication in 1976, and that made farmers look awesome. Like really, legit, awesome. That was a cool statement back then. Now we kind of can't really talk like that as much, right? Because people are a little bit more concerned about their food than they are the efficiencies on a farm. Okay? So you take that, which was a seemingly harmless quote back then, you pair it with this picture, throw a black filter, a picture of a sow in a, in a gestation stall here, and you put a black filter over it, and you make it look a little creepy and scary, that would make me look good, like you got to like, feel good. I don't want to go and eat eat pork after seeing that, it makes it kind of sad, right? Well, a picture is worth a thousand words. A video is worth a million words. Like, so what we have started to do is we've started to kind of bolster some of that. We provide big, bold, beautiful images of farms. We provide videos inside farms, and we show people exactly what happens. We're not hiding anything. Our farmers do some really, really good things. But a guy that spends his time in a barn working with animals all day and then he goes outside of his barn, gets in his tractor, and works all night in his tractor by himself. After he already spent all day taking care of his animals by himself, catching a pattern here, like what, what might he not be really great at? Telling people all the cool stuff that he's doing, or explaining that his blood, sweat, and tears go into this product, and he makes sure that there's a healthy, wholesome, safe food source out there, right? He may not be the best at communicating that, so that's why we're here and that's what we do. We do that through social. Um, kind of our mainstay right now is the Ohio Hog Farmers Facebook page. Anybody heard of that? Anybody see anything that comes out of that? We're the crazy bacon people. Um, we're the same people that uh, got really edgy and we'll post a picture of a pork chop and then maybe even in the same day we'll post a picture on a farm. Like, crazy, huh? Great. <laughs> Pigs make pork. Like, we're proud of it. We own it. We get it. It's that. Other than a giant number. <laughs> That's the amount of people that we reached on our Facebook page alone last year. 69 million. So, we're going out. We're finding out what people want. We're giving it to them. We're having conversations. We're reaching people. People are coming back and they're asking us more questions. And then we can... We can have conversations about that. And then we throw a picture of bacon in there, and even more people come in, and then it's like a spiral. It's like a big beast that you got to continuously feed. But people wouldn't be coming and asking questions if they didn't have them, right? So it's very important to be out there, to be seen, and, and to have those conversations. And here's why. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Food babe, right? Yeah, she rocks. <laughs> no, she legitimately rocks. Like, she is great at, don't, no dirty looks yet. She is legitimately good at what she does, which is getting people to believe a message. Whether that message is legit in my mind or totally crap, uh, she gets people to believe it. She gets the Food Babe Army to get behind her and push a message, right? And then you get stuff like this. And the Subway Antibiotic Announcement. And then people are sitting around going, well, you know what? Ever heard of the movable middle? So there's like 10% over here that are like, I'm never using an animal product, ever. It's like, against my belief, never going to do it. Then there's 10% over here that are like me, that are like, pass the cheeseburgers. <laughs> and then there's 80% that could kind of go either way, and they believe that farmers are doing the right thing. Uh, they just want to go to a program and pork shop, right? So they don't know what to believe until they see something like this, and they're going, huh. Well, Subway is saying my, my food's full of antibiotics, so uh, they must be doing the right thing by getting rid of that. So what we do is we tell people the truth. We tell them that there is no harmful antibiotic residue in the meat that you eat. And we write a blog post about it, and we throw bacon on it, and people share bacon. 
<laughs> and then we go out and we give out free bacon to people that will come and talk to us on the streets outside of a courthouse or in a grocery store or all around Greater Columbus. And we encourage them to come and have these conversations online as well. And then we do a video about it. And we ask people what their concerns are with, with food. And we establish this whole conversation. And we get 230,000 people. And we reach 230,000 people with this message. Right? So there's places that we can also go online. Uh, we've started something with the National Pork Board, the Real Pig Farming Movement. Um, it's a place where farmers and those interested in food can go and find out. They can use the hashtag Real Pig, Real Pig Farming. They can find out how their food is grown and raised. In the first six months, that was used in 14,000 posts and had 14.8 total impressions. It's pretty good, right? And the thing is, the tricky part about social, and I'll be really quick here, is we don't know what's going to be sticky, right? So all we can do is give people what they want. People want useful information, so we give them pork loin, and we show that you can cut that pork loin into chop or chops, strips, a roast, and you can use one cut of meat, get it on sale, and use it for a week's worth of meals. We show people what it's like inside farms and what farmers really do every single day. We take selfies and we talk about them. We take videos. We give people the things that they really, really want. Right? We call it October Porktober, being real clever because it's National Pork Month, and we reach 4 million people. 38,000 comments just on that single graphic. And that allowed us to bolster conversations and push things in a positive direction. <clears throat> Take pictures, again, of what really happens on side, or inside farms. I don't know about you guys, but they don't seem really disturbed. They seem kind of comfortable, right? I cook a lot, like I enjoy it, it's something I do, and I really enjoy Instagram. Um, so my wife hates it because I'll cook this awesome meal and then she'll eat it like out in our living room or in our dining room by herself, and I'm still out there taking pictures of it. <laughs> but people love this stuff. Like we get tons of engagement and interaction on these kind of things. Bottom line is what we're trying to do is we're trying to share the story of farmers. We show pictures of pigs, we video some frying bacon, and we build trust in, in farmers and the food, 